really cool about something as simple as cassia and cinnamon is that it destroys the ability for microorganisms to have quorum sensing. They're unable to have this communication exchange. And so when we look at, for example, post-surgical intervention, one of the most treacherous things is dealing with quorum sensing and biofilm development. And there's not a lot that can happen in medicine to control that. To be really graphic for you, like in orthopedics, if you were to have a knee replaced and you were to have some type of a post-operative infection, it's a pretty brutal sequence you're gonna go through. Your leg is gonna be opened back up, it's gonna remain open, and they're gonna scrub your leg with bleach. Literally, just scrub it out. When you're, you can just look at it, it's wide open, you can see it all, and it's gonna be that way until they can control the organism. That's the answer in medicine. But yet we have something as simple as an essential oil that we now know is effective. One of the things that we've discovered through our Johns Hopkins research is that even with the more virulent strains, the most difficult strains, the gram-negative strains, we find answers with essential oils. And you use them every single day. Think about the resiliency that that gives to us, the opportunity that that represents. Another active part of your immune system is your body's ability to produce an antioxidant known as glutathione. And in fact, what's really not always discussed about glutathione, it's the limiting factor of your body's immune system. It's part of what drives that whole process and allows your body to function efficiently in its antioxidant capacity, but also in its efficiency for ridding the body of unwanted organisms. The challenge with glutathione is the older we get, the less that our body's able to produce. So if you're like Kurt Jowers here on this scale, somewhere around 20 years old, I'm guessing, he has high amounts of glutathione. If you're in the middle of the scale where I am, you're reducing. If you're like Corey Lindley, I went past the end of the scale. I'll give you the spreadsheet on that earlier. And you have almost no glutathione production left in your body. Think about glutathione this way. Glutathione protects your cells from the inside out. And you cannot take a supplement. Your body has to produce its own. So we need efficiency within our body's cellular energy, within our body's sequences. Remember what we said metabolism was, how our body creates energy, how our body heals itself, and how our body rids itself of toxicity. We need efficiency, and we need efficiency in our body's ability to create glutathione. Now, there's some key components that are necessary for glutathione. We need glycine, we need cysteine, and we need glutamate. Glutamate is the problem. We have to be able to transport that to the cell itself. And that's where the difficulty comes into. Here's yet another reason why I really implore you to be using the lifelong vitality. This isn't a total ingredient deck for the lifelong vitality, but these are the ingredients that are necessary for your body to transport and help to form glutathione within your cells. You need all of these different vitamins and minerals to participate in that process. Nothing in your body is singular. Nothing occurs outside of itself. It is all interconnected. One of the biggest challenges that we now see in medicine, and also one of the greatest benefits that we see, is the amount of specialty that exists. But it becomes challenging when we're not able to look at the body as a whole. You have an opportunity with what we're doing and what we're talking about today to look at your body as a whole combined event, nothing being singular. So life on vitality can support you in the use of glutathione or the development of glutathione. This was a really interesting study. They were looking at tumorogenesis. They were looking at the development of tumors in the body and they wanted to know would, in particular, would delimonene have any effect on tumors? And what they found was really interesting. Yes, it did. It reduced, it, it reduced the tumor growth. The other thing that they discovered, however, in this research was that all of the test subjects had extremely low levels of glutathione and that all of those normalized once they were given delimonene. 
Now you've heard me say many, many, many times, use citrus oils on a regular basis, especially because we need high concentrations of D-limonene and glutathione in critical tissues that are responsible for protecting and maintaining the normal sequences of your body, all the chemical sequences of your body, like the liver. And so we can have an increased concentration. Johns Hopkins did another study where they looked at the ability to increase levels of glutathione, normalized levels of glutathione in critical tissues like the liver. And they also found that D-limonene was able to do that. You get D-limonene in the citrus oils. We have very few oils that are almost singular in their chemistry. Wintergreen is one, birch is one, and a couple of the citrus oils. Grapefruit and tangerine and wild orange I don't show here, all range from 95 to 98, 99% singular, pure D-limonene. And so I'd like you to develop a daily routine of using citrus oils. Now we can diffuse them, we can use them in the models we talked about yesterday, and if I had time, I would really go through and talk with you about all of the variances and differences with each one of our citrus oils. So perhaps this could be a reference for something that we'll talk about in the future. They all carry their own specific reasoning for wanting to use them. What they have in common, they're all elevating to the mood, and what they have in common, they all have some ability to increase glutathione production within your body. My preferred method for using essential oils for this purpose is an internal model. Now if I had time today, I would go through and I'd explain to you why using oils internally is safe. I know that there's information that maybe you might come across that says it's gonna be really dangerous for you. That is not the case. And the next time I come, I'm happy to address that with you. May I give you a way that you can find some of that information right now. Go to www.doterrascienceblog.com and we have a number of different articles and studies and things that are posted there for you to learn how the body's physiology works this way and why we say adding a citrus oil to your water each day is a good thing to do or putting a citrus oil in a capsule. You know, we've added capsules, oils, to a lot of different capsules. I would love to see us do that with a citrus oil. Would you like that? I would like that too. And I think we talk about it often. We just haven't done it yet. But maybe that will come very quickly in the near future. Because it's an excellent way to consume the oils on a daily basis. And we're talking about fortifying the body in this process. Now I'm gonna move through the rest of this very quickly because I'm running out of time very quickly. I always feel like when I come, I like to have about eight hours of time. That would be nice, but it's okay. We'll just be really, really focused today because Corey's got some amazing spreadsheets he wants to show you. <laughs> I give Corey such a hard time, but I'll tell you, we're in the hands of a genius with Corey. I sit right next to Corey Lindley in our staff meetings, in our executive meeting. And uh, the reason I do is because I'm always keenly interested in what he's going to say and how he's going to respond. And I, I find myself a lot of times just saying, yeah, what he said. Right? So he really is a genius and he's very well deserving of the accolades that he receives much of the time. Even my uh, your great uh, accolades for him Let's talk about inflammation because this is the third big thing that we all need to be concerned with. Now I know that we understand and recognize there's a lot of essential oils that are really good for modulating pain. Let me tell you why I have keen interest in this. On your right left hand side, you're seeing what is a normal thoracic and lumbar spine. On the right hand side, you're seeing an abnormal version of that. I would like to tell you that I'm the one on the left, but unfortunately, I'm the one on the right. That's my spine. And uh, you may not be an expert in interpreting x-rays and imaging, but I have no disc space left in my spine. My spine has collapsed on itself. And pain is a daily thing for me. 
I will tell you, not too long ago, I, I did have an opportunity to make a doctor's visit. I don't do that very often, but I think it's wise once in a while to have a checkup to make sure that everything is where it needs to be. And so I did blood work and a number of things just to gauge where I'm at in my own health. And uh, my doctor, whom I went to, who I know personally, he said, Dave, so you, you, I mean, I know you and it's fine, but just for the record, you didn't fill out your forms completely. And I'm like, no, I did. I gave you all the information. He goes, no, you didn't list any of your medications. And I said, well, I don't take any medications. I don't, there's none that I take. And he said, that's not healthy for you. <laughs> and I thought, I thought that was kind of the whole point. I thought that's what it meant to be healthy, was to not, not be to doing those it. things. Yeah. It's unusual that you find individuals who are not doing that in this day and age. But with the essential oils, I think we all have that equal opportunity. And even though I have a circumstance that causes me some difficulty from time to time, and certainly every day I experience a good amount of pain associated with that, I manage it all with essential oils. If you want to know why I love Aroma Touch, you're looking at the reason. Part of the reason for the development of the Aroma Touch was as I would return home, my wife would always say, what can I do for you? How do I help you? And she would very kindly put oils and things on my back and I started thinking, maybe there's a way that she could help me. And we spent a year and a half developing that in what is now today the Aroma Touch. So, I'm a big fan of the Aroma Touch along with you. Now, I want you to think, I know you don't have DDR Prime here, and you do have some access to Nova Prime, and we'll get that, I know, registered at some point, but you can still get this from the U.S., and I want to encourage you to do that. Now, we did some research a few years ago looking at DDR Prime. We did that with a researcher, a cancer researcher by the name of Patty Champagne. And Patty wanted to look most expressively at three different things. She wanted to know, does DDR prime stimulate apoptosis? In other words, does it create cell death in damaged cells that cannot be repaired? And she discovered in her research, and she came and presented this for us at convention, that DDR prime does that, and it does that extremely well. She also wanted to know, was DDR prime protective for your cells? Did it prevent damage within your cells? And she also discovered that that was the case. And then the third thing she wanted to know was how does DDR prime interact with protein sequencing within the body? And that is a little bit of the holy grail with essential oils, to be honest with you, because that gives us indication of how and why essential oils are doing what they're doing. So what we did know is that there is interaction, there is protein interaction, but we were not clear to the extent that that happened, nor was she able to discover that fully. But we, since that time, have been able to move that research forward, and we've done that with a gene expression study. And we did that last year, we gave you some exposure to that. We looked at the entire human genome. Nobody has ever done this with essential oils before. We took several of our essential oils and we looked at every single gene expression in the human body. That's more than 20,000. The test results of that is a deck about this thick, to be honest with you. Now, doTERRA is soon to publish a paper based in all of this research. It will go into a scientific journal and we're in the final stages of that. It's been written and it's been prepared. And it's groundbreaking for this reason. And looking at the human genome, we are now starting to understand why the essential oils react the way that they do. One of the oils we looked at was DDR prime. Now, if we look at some of the individual oils in DDR prime, I know that this graph is a little difficult to really get wrapped around, and there's a lot of things that are going on on the graph. But each one of those points, much like what you learned about a GC and a mass spec yesterday, represents something different. We're either upregulating or downregulating specific genome activity within the body. And if we upregulate the right ones and we downregulate the right ones, or vice versa, depending on what the case is, we can determine the effectiveness of an essential oil. Now, what this actually was, we represented that this was. Uh, 
probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to anyway. <laughs> We're in Europe, so I'm gonna just let it all hang out there, I 